right, so as you can see, this is the detonate dead build that everybody has been requesting lately. Um, as a concept, this is pretty close to the uh, original burning discharger builds, if you're familiar with those. Um, they were fairly popular on um, Onslaught League as a CI build, but nowadays they're not that popular anymore because they're they're they have a quite they have a quite uh, high risk factor because you have to play them with life, and uh, that means playing them with Valpact. So to uh, sum that up in a nutshell, it's pretty fucking nasty and it's not very group viable at all. And uh, because I really like the clear speed, and because I really like blowing stuff up, I decided I need something else. So a friend of mine actually brought this to my attention. Um, this is after the uh, Desecrate was introduced to the game, which means we do not need to kill something before we can actually detonate. So we just put our corpses over here, do the curse, boom, explode stuff, boom, everything dies. Um, Reflect is not really an issue because most of our damage comes from burn damage and uh, because we have level 20 arctic armor and we also have mind double meta so Reflect in any case shouldn't be a problem as long as you don't uh, reflect like an extra life golem or a boss on a, uh, a Reflect map or something. That's just that's just silly if you do that. I mean come on and um, the clear speed, in my opinion, is pretty much the same as you would get with a Discharger and pretty much the same as you would get with a Burning Miscreations Summoner, which seems to be very popular these days, but uh, I'm not much of a Summoner person, it's way too, way too passive gameplay for me, so yeah. Maybe this is uh, more to your liking if you like to actively blow stuff up. And as you can see, the clear speed is very nice, the uh, radius is very nice, and we take almost no damage. And this is again because of Arctic Armor and because of Might of a Meta. And um, we have, a, I think, a fairly high amount of armor as well. And here we go, reflect, reflect, boom, 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 and as you can see, I take no damage. So up until high level maps, uh, I'm, I'm fairly sure reflect is not a problem at all in any case. And uh, most bosses in maps, you can one-shot them. In groups, it is extremely viable, unlike the Discharger. Um, the Discharger is actually really, really bad in uh, most group setups, simply because, in my opinion, if, if you do not one-shot with a Discharger, the build kind of breaks. The build becomes kind of useless, because you need to do the whole, you know, getting endurance charges up, discharging, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so. Let's stop talking about the Discharger and let's talk about this build. Um, our main DPS link, as you can see, is Detonate Dead, Fire Penetration, Chance to Ignite, Elemental Prolif, Concentrated Effect, that's your fifth one, uh, Increased Area of Effect, that's the sixth one. Um, you do not actually need these uh, six links. It does very, very good damage with four links as well. Um, if you have a five link, I honestly wouldn't know. I think conk effect would be better than um, increased area, but this is very debatable. Um, it's kind of awkward because you reduce your area by a lot with conk effect, especially the area of your prolif. So five link is a bit awkward. You kind of want either a four link or a six link, but um, yeah. Um, as for auras, we use uh, grace, and you can switch grace with haste if you have very very good armor. You, you need, you absolutely need to run Clarity if you run uh, Arctic Armor. Uh, Purity of Fire, obviously, mostly for Reflect, just so we don't take as much damage. Then, um, this is all preference choice, pretty much. Cast one damage taken with uh, Elemental Weakness, just, you know, automatic curses, automatic Enduring Cries, and uh, increased area for both the curse and um, the Enduring Cry. Then we have uh, Desecrate, faster casting and empower and empower is not a necessity but because the uh, the level of the corpses that you're throwing on the ground is based on the level of your desecrate um, you ultimately want to get an empower and preferably you also want a weapon with plus one to gems I don't have this but yeah these these things are kind of hard to get um, you want something like this you want fire damage okay no you want 
a scepter. You actually want a scepter because spell damage doesn't affect the uh, the damage, the fire damage of detonate dead. Um, only elemental damage and fire damage does. So you want to get a scepter with um, with fire damage, with cast speed, with mana regeneration, and also with plus one to gems. Uh, this thing, this stuff's kind of hard to get, and it's um, it's kind of something people would most likely vendor. So uh, if you ever find something like this, don't vendor it. All right. So the rest of our gear uh, is pretty much generic Eldritch battery gear. Um, oh, how about the links here? Um, this is lightning warp. This is also a preference choice. It's not at all required. Like you can make most of this stuff up yourself. Um, this is just for movement, lightning warp, reduced duration, faster casting, and a manual enduring cry, just in case I need it. Um, Arctic armor, flammability, manual cast, and faster casting or increased area, whatever you prefer. And uh, okay, so the rest of the gear is pretty much generic Eldritch battery gear. Uh, life resistance, you want a fair amount of uh, energy shield and armor, or yes. Just like make a mix, whatever. Um, you don't need hybrid gear. You can just like a support build, for example, use um, like a pure piece of evasion gear or two pieces of evasion armor gear or something, and then just use like I don't know a, a pure ES helmet, a hubris circlet or something. Um, just make sure it actually has a life. That's kind of important. Um, carcass jack not a requirement, but Obviously, it adds a lot to this build. It adds 20% radius and extra damage and, I mean, gore. Who doesn't like gore, right? Uh, a series foible, not really a requirement. Um, you can use something like this instead with mana regeneration, life resistance. The rings are pretty much the same, life resistance, regen. Um, on the belt, try to get maximum yes, not required. Life and resistance is usually enough. And um, we can use a Searing Touch in our offhand just so uh, we can attempt to one-shot stuff that we couldn't otherwise one-shot. Like, I don't know, if you just want to one-shot a boss, you know, just just because, just for lols, then uh, switch to the Searing Touch, do your detonate, and uh, watch everything burn. So that's pretty cool. And also we have a, a Searing Bond here because on Cruel and Normal Difficulty, I will do really shitty damage with this build. And this is because... I think Desecrate has a limit of how high level the corpses can be on each difficulty. So if I go on normal, um, I think there is an actual limit on how high the corpses can be. So that kind of makes my DPS really bad on normal, which is kind of weird. And that's why I have a Searing Bond to just like, you know, kill bosses on normal really easily. And um, as for passives, we can start as a Scion or as a Templar. Uh, personally, I prefer the Scion, obviously, because it looks fucking amazing. And um, we go, I would say, if you start as a Scion, you go towards the Templar tree first. You pick up these um, these burn nodes. They're very, very important. This is where your main damage comes from, the, uh, the Prolif burn. This is your main damage. Um, you go down to these area nodes here. Very fucking important. Take the life nodes. Um, these aura nodes are not really ne necessary until um, fairly high level. Again, you go for the area nodes, very important. Uh, Eldritch Battery, I would recommend you pick this up at around level 60 or 70 when you actually can and want to support um, a high level Arctic Armor. It's not necessary until maps, honestly. Um, Iron Reflexes, I would pick this up at around 40 to 50 or so, maybe. Uh, Mind of a Meta, I would not recommend picking this up until high 70s or maybe even 80s until you have a, a very decent amount of regen I would recommend about 250 to uh, 300 maybe and um, a casting mana pool of 500 to 600 or so at least because um, if you take too much damage on the mana your arctic armor might drop off because uh, yeah you, you lose you just lose too much mana and arctic armor is not support anymore and blah 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 all right, so um, there's a, gonna be a link in the description for the uh, actual skill tree, so you can have a look at that yourself. Um, flasks, whatever you feel works for you, honestly. I just like having the spell frozen and, and bleed just in case. Um, a ruby flask, very essential. Um, 
if you for some reason feel like exploding a high HP mob, then uh, at least use a ruby flask first, you know, guys, use use protection. Um, granite, you know, whatever. Protection, again, movement, yada yada. Okay, so, like I said, reflect is not really an issue until uh, very high level maps. Just be careful when you explode like a golem or a boss, and honestly, I would never, I would never blow up a boss. That's, that's just stupid. All right, so if you guys have any more questions, feel free to check me out on Twitch, and there's going to be a link in the description. And hope you guys enjoyed the guide, and I'll see you guys around.